ओके थैंक यू थैंक यू वेरी मच फॉर इनवाइटिंग मी हियर एंड अ वेरी गुड मॉर्निंग टू ऑल प्रोबेबली आई विल स्पीक फॉर सम 20 टू 30 मिनट्स अबाउट रिगार्डिंग द प्रोस्पेक्ट्स ऑफ इंजीनियरिंग एंड व्हाट यू शुड डू देन मे बी आई कैन टेक सम क्वेश्चंस फ्रॉम योर साइड on uh, the experiences as, as, as an engineer and how uh, your future life and future prospects will be there so that is uh, my plan for today so in general uh, when i uh, speak to students especially uh, those uh, plus two students who are looking for a career uh, in engineering or uh, science uh, i get uh, some four questions Uh, so probably those questions uh, will be your own questions today so i will list out the, those questions that uh, generally people ask first thing is whether uh, i should choose science or engineering that is the first thing people ask secondly uh, so i have uh, decided to uh, go for engineering which branch i should take that is the second question generally i get and then Uh, i have decided so such and such branch i have i am i am planning to go for this co- uh, this course which college i should take so that is another question maybe there are in kerala itself there are around 150 colleges engineering colleges and uh, institutes uh, imparting technical education so which uh, and what is the criterion and how you sh- i should choose uh, such an institute and finally uh, people ask so if i take uh, this college this the course uh, what will happen to me after 5 years what will happen to me after 10 years maybe what will be my career so these are uh, the general questions that i get uh, from students and i will uh, in the initial part of my talk i will try try to answer each of these question mm-hmm. as far as i know the first thing uh, maybe many of you might have confusion when you are completing your plus 2 whether i should go for engineering whether i should go for science or uh, some humanities kind of subject so let us examine uh, some facts uh, engineering uh, or uh, your engineering degree offered in india is a four year course whereas uh, the science or arts uh, graduation is a three year program so there is of course a distinction between these two a three year program uh, and a four year program uh, has some differences in terms of employment especially uh, in the western countries most of the western degrees or uh, they say they say that it's a ketol level you are uh, plus 2 people pursue uh, graduation uh, after ketol there most of the degrees are of four years so the four year degree has a better chance of uh, getting uh, recognized in a foreign institute or a, uh, in a foreign country so that was one of the original reasons why so many engineers were uh, recruited for own or uh, see uh, jobs abroad so engineering as such currently is a four year degree it has its own advantages definitely there are some disadvantages also secondly uh, uh, job wise or career wise Uh, engineers are in demand all over the world whereas uh, science graduates uh, generally uh, they after your graduation it is uh, somewhat difficult to find, uh, get a decent job nowadays most of the science graduate go for uh, clerical or uh, banking kind of jobs or uh, maybe some of them go for um, for uh, some higher studies they continue go for they become teachers okay it, it is not a lesser thing you know what i'm not deriding uh, but uh, as such uh, engineer engineers have an edge uh, in terms of employment in many spheres of life uh, whether it is uh, in uh, computing or in electronics or civil engineering or a lot of uh, uh, see opportunities uh, are there for you uh, in an engineering world so the first question uh, what i suggest is that you think you as us whether you have the aptitude for science and uh, do you think you have uh, you need an immediately uh, once you graduate you need a job so in that case uh, if you need you are in need of a job or if you if you want to uh, start your life at the age of uh, maybe i'm sorry uh, same 23 or so uh, you should choose engineering 
maybe if you if you choose uh, science or uh, some other allied subjects even medicine your career will start at a very later stage so uh, so those who are choosing engineering if you study properly you have an early bed advantage uh, maybe some of you might be knowing your senior students are getting placed in good companies uh, by uh, after immediately after uh, completing the graduation and uh, now let us come to the uh, second question you have uh, decided to go for engineering so which branch uh, you should choose if you look at the prospectus of a uh, of a college or uh, some uh, college website you will you will find n number of courses different different combinations you you will see electronics you will see computer science computer and electronics uh, see many 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 confusing things are there <clears throat> but uh, from Uh, an engineering educator's perspective. So I've been working in this field for around thirty years. So I feel that there are five major engineering branches and some minor branches also, and some minor variations also. So I will list out all the the major branches. Uh, currently, uh, so we have civil engineering, mechanical engineering, electrical engineering, uh, electronics. and computer science these are the major uh, engineering branches uh, taught at engineering colleges and uh, they of course there are uh, some minor um, branches like chemical engineering automobile engineering so uh, we you can even you can consider them as a subset of the above five um, branches and then there is architecture also which all which i am right now i am not doing so as, uh, as i told you we have five branches let us look at each of them one by one Uh, so you might have uh, seen uh, engineers from different walks of life civil engineers you might have seen computer engineers mechanical engineers see different kinds of engineers are around us so let us look at uh, each uh, category of engineering one by one so first thing uh, let us look at civil engineering so civil engineering uh, is an uh, has been in practice for a long long time probably if any from your history books you might have uh, studied about agriculture revolution evil as you were uh, uh, evolution of uh, mankind big uh, civilizations etc so civil engineering um, maybe it originated some uh, 12000 uh, years ago uh, before around the time of your uh, agriculture revolution so there is a very very long uh, tradition is there and civil engineering traditional civil engineering dealt with construction of see palaces construction of temples maybe some irrigation some dams etc maybe there were there was a, a very exquisite pieces of art like uh, your sculptures etc and later on uh, as the time progressed maybe the, uh, the there are lot of newer uh, design newer ideas came into thing scientifically the civil engineers uh, uh, led the world to the current situation no mm, so since this is a very long tradition and it is a, it, you can say that is a mature science see the research kind of uh, things they have matured and uh, so that is about civil engineering now let us look at what are the prospects of civil engineering uh, see Uh, as i already told civil engineers get jobs in construction industry say building big uh, say maybe construction of uh, uh, big townships your highways your uh, irrigation projects dams etc so such kind of uh, development activity needs a civil engineer now let us <coughs> look at what are the issues right now now we are going to a corona corona times and uh, this year uh, the recruitment in civil engineering is rather less because there is every every kind of a recession going on in our uh, uh, world due to the corona so the problem is that currently civil engineering graduates are in on our note in great demand right now but uh, see i know you guys are in 12th or 11th you will be ready getting ready for your graduation by uh, maybe 5 or 6 years later by that time i am very sure that this difficult times will pass and the world will come back to normalcy normal uh, routine operations of uh, in with, with which we were familiar some few years back 
then there will be definitely a resurgence of all industries or construction activities every every kind of uh, development things is going to, uh, going to happen so if you have an aptitude for such things like uh, uh, design of buildings design of uh, bridges or such, such things you can definitely consider civil engineering as an option uh, for your career so what you need is a good understanding of mathematics is needed for civil for any civil engineer uh, you need your plus 2 mathematics that, that is for any kind of engineer uh, I'll, i'll tell you your plus 2 mathematics and physics are very important you need a solid foundation in that uh, to get hold of uh, the i'm sorry just let me switch off the phone okay so uh, you need a and a solid background in mathematics and physics for uh, any kind of engineering so let us come to that so uh, next branch um, we may consider is a mechanical engineer so mechanical engineering started off uh, around 300 to 400 years ago when you had a industrial revolution you might be you, you might have studied in your classes about industrial revolution how steam engine was in, invented how railways uh, came into being how big uh, factories boilers uh, so production kind of things came in uh, uh, took this world by a storm uh, so that happened around uh, in uh, uh, maybe 1800s or so uh, in 2 uh, 3 centuries back and uh, mechanical engineers uh, have uh, driven this world since then see there was automation mechanical automation in many things shipping uh, transportation uh aeronautical uh, you are all all your kind of uh, <coughs> machinery mechanisms etc so your mechanical engineer is supposed to uh, look after uh, or design such things but here also uh, the demand uh, this year is slightly low uh, i am very sorry to say that mechanical engineers uh, this year have a difficult time just because the uh, see such uh, development uh, activities have been uh, grounded for due to the corona you might uh, you might uh, see even our railways have sto- stopped uh, uh, you their services your airlines have been grounded so uh, see the mechanical engineering graduates a fresh graduate might have a difficulty this year but it may not be the case the uh, the say five years later i was uh, telling you the same thing for uh, civil engineering civil engineers uh, the mechanical engineers uh, as uh, face the same problem of uh, recession right now now let us uh, look at electrical engineering and electrical engineering has a shorter history maybe you might uh, have studied in your uh, textbooks that uh, alva edison invented their uh, electric bulb some somewhere in 1888 or so i'm, I'm not sure about the dates so we have a very short history of electrical engineering but electrical engineering uh, had a huge impact on all aspects of uh, your human life last century uh, in the 19th and um, 20th century electrical engineers were the, uh, the stars they uh, actually took uh, the uh, where to do one step further by the uh, by giving numerous new technologies you you might be uh, using many of the electrical engineering inventions at your home so electrical engineering engineering uh, is still progressing now electrical engineers uh, are uh, were in very great demand uh, maybe to uh, till the last end of the last century and there was a small uh, de- uh, decline in their demand um in last 20 years or so, so however now there are two uh, important things coming up which will definitely be affecting your lives because our as teachers or senior uh, citizens our uh, time is somewhat limited maybe 20 years or so but you guys have a longer uh, life span uh, or expectation so you you will be definitely be encountering two very important inventions that are happening right now one is solar power so you, you even now uh, people are pushing for uh, solar electricity solar uh, power 
So we are going to have a huge leap in solar system, solar engineering. So electrical engineers are, dri are driving the, the, this revolution in terms of uh, building solar systems. Uh, maybe the, its circuitry, its uh, power distribution mechanisms, etc. So there is a uh, there is a huge there will be a demand for electrical engineers very soon due to this solar revolution. And second thing that is going to affect you very much is electric vehicles. Uh, I think by uh, 2030 or 2035, uh, all European uh, countries are uh, planning to switch to electric vehicles. So electric vehicles and the electric uh, the technology uh, related to electric machine I mean uh, um, transportation uh, is currently uh, taking a leap. So electrical engineers are currently uh, driving it, and in uh, the near future, uh, we are expecting that electrical engineering will uh, uh, pick up its momentum. So you can. You can think of uh, if you are interested in uh, such technologies. Uh, so emerging, there are a lot of uh, subfields for this: uh, the the both solar and electric vehicles. Like you, you, you can have material science. You can develop solar cells. You can develop uh, batteries. Uh, there, there are a lot of uh, interdisciplinary options also. Even even from mechanical uh, uh, engineering also, there are uh, options for electric vehicles. So you can think of a career. Uh, in electrical engineering, if you are interested in such stuff, and uh, then uh, let us uh, let me move on to electronics. Electronics probably electronics uh, has a history of say around fifty years. Uh, the uh, transistor was invented uh, somewhere in nineteen forty eight. So the electronics uh, engineering uh, took a uh, very uh, great advancement uh, during the last fifty years. And I actually, I am an electronics uh, graduate uh, in my in my own engineering days. I had uh, taken up electronics because that was the the major, uh, most attractive course to undergo at that time. And I think uh, my uh, generation has uh, reaped the profits also for choosing uh, that career. Now, electronics is still uh, relevant. And there are a lot of developments, a lot of uh, miniaturization, things like uh, con a connected world we are going to live in. So electronics are still a, a big one, some more potential to go uh, further. Also, electronics is uh, and uh, electronics is, uh, is closely related to computer science. Also, so as long as computers are there, computing computer science is there, there will be a definitely electro uh, demand for electronics engineers. Also, see there are a lot of options like communication systems uh, or uh, instrumentation. Uh, things uh, vary every every year. New things come up. So you can think of a uh, good electronics and communication degree uh, if you if you are interested in, interest in hardware, communications, or uh, uh, things like that. So uh, one thing I, I would like to warn you is that uh, the electronics and communication engineering needs a good amount of mathematics. So you 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 need to have a very good understanding of your uh, plus two level uh, calculus, linear algebra, trigonometry. And uh, maybe probability theory, things like that, you need uh, for electronics and communication. And if you don't have that background, uh, or if you have, if you uh, are planning to, to take degrees in, in pursue electronics, uh, I strongly suggest you to uh, refresh your uh, mathematics before joining the course. And finally, let me uh, come to the computer science. So, see, currently, computer science is a star uh, branch right now. This is, this is mainly because um, the corona. See, we have been confined to our homes, uh, to our rooms uh, since two years almost. And uh, even though every industry faced a recession, uh, the computing industry, especially uh, e-commerce or uh, IT services, they have a good time now. Because you you might be uh, might be uh, using many new services, many new websites, or uh, new new ideas uh, driven from IT companies. And this year, I will tell you, this year uh, in most of the colleges, computer science graduates have been uh, placed extensively. More, and and next year, 
or probably in two one to two years uh, people are expecting more uh, computer science students to come up i mean uh, more computer science jobs to come up and beyond that uh, because this is this is a kind of uh, post corona phase is mainly maybe maybe we are going to start the the first thing to pick up will be it industry with all new services all our customizations to uh, your different services that you uh, get so probably mm, i think this year people are, are frantically after computer science frantically people are looking for uh, admissions to computer science and uh, i i would like to warn one thing because i have studied electronics computer science and uh, a little bit of electrical engineering also computer uh, science is not computer gaming so many people many many people from your schools come to colleges and get uh, say the a shock of their life we never teach you computer games we are teaching you the uh, mathematics your programming skills how to build the systems computer systems and all so uh, i think i have seen people coming where is where are the games asking me how do you write games we, we never teach you game uh, writing games games is a very specialized area a very very specialized area where uh, you will have to build up on your own and so and for computer science also you need maths you need uh, so computer the maths required for computer science and uh, maybe electronics is slightly different and that uh, still your plus 2 maths is very important if you want to understand uh, concepts or uh, if you want to conceptualize things from once you go out of your uh, for as your career in your career you need maths and uh, so that is that, that these are these are the five branches major branches that uh, colleges in kerala offer uh, this is this is the uh, case with the, all other states also now let me come to the minor things we have a chemical engineering you have uh, automobile engineering you have uh, um, see some production industrial engineering things like that see they are mostly in minor specializations of uh, chemical engineering is different but uh, industrial production maybe automobile they are all minor variations of mechanical engineering similarly uh, electrical and electronics engineering electrical engineering electronic electrical instrumentation they are all uh, they all come under same umbrella umbrella and most probably uh, the content that we teach you in these different courses will be um, almost uh, same um, maybe in the final year or uh, last three semester there will be some changes so uh, you can opt for them uh, depending on the reputation of the college etc now now let me come to also i think uh, that is an over broad, broad overview of what kind of courses you are you may get in engineering colleges now let me come to the most important uh, question of which uh, college you should join so that is a very actually uh, it's a uh, it's a difficult question for me to answer because i also work in uh, one college so uh, i cannot uh, say this is good this is bad but still i will give you some indicators of how to choose Uh, how to uh, find out the best college uh, uh, for you uh, in kerala uh, we have uh, three kinds of uh, colleges uh, the first category is government colleges maybe you have your uh, uh, college of engineering trivandrum then uh, there are four or five or six government colleges are there and two two three aided colleges are there they are, they are also almost similar to Uh, your uh, government college these are these are the first colleges uh, to be established uh, in kerala and uh, uh, maybe they are the leaders in uh, uh, their your uh, engineering uh, currently government colleges lead uh, all, all our uh, engineering uh, curriculum in uh, placements or even in uh, results etc then uh, students 19 towards the end of uh, 1990s or so Uh, there was a huge uh, rush for uh, electronics computer science uh, the new generation things uh, started then actually government started a series of uh, uh, government controlled colleges uh, that means these colleges are government colleges but they uh, offer courses at with at a higher fees rather than the low subsidized rates of government colleges in government colleges you your uh, month your yearly fees will be something like 10000 rupees if you get into a good government college uh, you you will have to spend around 10000 rupees as a fees per year in a good government college 
whereas uh, government controlled colleges are under three category um, three different institutions right, right now running in kerala uh, one is the institute of human resources development uh, that in ihrp i am working with them i am working with ihrp then there is a lbs center and then finally there is a cape or cooperative academy of professional education so ihrp is a leader uh, in this kind of uh, colleges we have uh, mostly we are concentrated on electronics computer science uh, and electrical engineering a little bit of mechanical engineering here and there our colleges all these ihrd colleges uh, even lbs or uh, cape colleges they have all uh, these uh, branches only mostly we cater to uh, this uh, electronics computer science uh, branches and uh, some of the uh, the government controlled colleges are very good very good in the sense that they compete with uh, uh, government colleges for example uh, the model engineering college uh, in uh, ernakulam uh, they compete with the, uh, see, uh, the your uh, college of engineering trivandrum in terms of placements good good companies come there good uh, uh, maybe people uh, companies like google people get placed in companies like google or microsoft from there so uh, the these colleges or uh, uh, government controlled colleges have two kinds of fee structures uh, there are merit seats uh, which cost you 35000 rupees per year the these fees will be 35000 and there are management seats which cost you 65000 rupees per year and when you are hearing about management seats you will say that the, the somebody uh, will be giving you that seat uh, if you give a recommendation or something like that it is not like that see the in government colleges also management seats are also filled by from merit own merit the only difference between a merit seat and a management is a seat is that if you get a management seat you will have to pay more your admission will be from the same list same Uh, procedure same reservation uh, everything will be there and you uh, you will have to uh, get a you will have to pay a little bit more so uh, that is some kind of a government policy and i think in uh, list this year government uh, and many of the colleges this uh, the number has been reduced number of management seats have been reduced and in some of the the government controlled colleges you have nri seats also so these are reserved for a very very uh, small like uh, five seats three seats like that these are reserved for dependents of uh, nris and there you, the admissions are uh, based on marks whereas all other admissions in government and and uh, government controlled colleges are from the entrance examinations and finally let us come to the private colleges there are around 110 uh, private colleges in kerala uh, run by different managements here also uh, there are two kinds of seats merit seats 50% see this is this is filled by the government filled by the government i think the fees is something like 35 or 40000 for merit seat and uh, 50% of the seats are by, um, filled by the management management can charge any fees that they they fit i think government has some put some uh, cap on that still uh, management uh, offer a flexible uh, fee structure so these are the three uh, different kinds of colleges you, uh, you have now now let us come to the critical question of how to choose a college uh, i think uh, uh, you can apply certain parameters to for that first thing uh, you can look for is that who is the management and what is who is managing the college that is very important because uh, the management of the college is uh, the person or uh, the entity which uh, builds up uh, the infrastructure which runs the show maybe you should be also be knowing that as your your school is managed by somebody some church or maybe some trust i don't know um, because uh, i i don't know who is behind your trust so um, so that uh, the vision of that management is very important how uh, the direction of the college goes on uh so you can look at uh, some of the colleges around you in uh, ernakulam or uh, somewhere there where there are very good management uh, run uh, by very good uh, managements there are some colleges are not so not so good so uh, in in the in choosing colleges uh, you should choose you can choose government colleges first because government college is managed by government and uh, i am sure that government will fund it for a long time 
government funding will be there and recently in the last five years almost all government colleges have been uh, funded under kfp things like that and uh, infrastructure uh, wise we uh, the government colleges have uh, uh, improved a lot compared to the previous times uh, secondly uh, the management uh, single management uh, colleges need not be uh, be preferred that is what i said say like uh, if a management has five or six colleges like your uh, catholic church or uh, uh, some other uh, that kind of entity uh, so then there is a, a good chance that they will have a better management managerial structure this is in the case of schools also probably a, a chain uh, of schools will have will be better reputation or better uh, uh, exposure for students so that is uh, one thing you can choose uh, in terms of private college so, so your choice can be like from government college uh, then government control college then you can go for uh, private colleges and uh, depending on what branch you have chosen and then uh, the when you are looking at the college you should look at the the faculty who uh, is your faculty in government and government control colleges of generally uh, permanent faculty people uh, stay there for a long time like uh, so i have been working for 30 years so and uh, my my career uh, has been an entire career has been as a teacher as a professor as a principal and i have uh, built up a career here so so this kind of uh, people will be there in government and government control who work for a long career so that is in a way uh, advantages and there are some disadvantages people will get lazy towards the end of uh, your career and uh, maybe uh, maybe some uh, uh, some kind of uh, bad teachers may also be there in the colleges uh, whereas in uh, private uh, i think the faculty retention ratio is generally low like uh, you are joining for a four year course so, so you should not get faculty changed every uh, couple of months so uh, that is happening in many many places so you should uh, you should look at the faculty profiles uh, faculty qualification uh, whether they have uh, good uh, uh, phds from reputed institutes like uh, iit nit or uh, things like that and then uh, you should uh, look at how long have been they used you can ask some of the students also your current students of the colleges uh, they might be giving you some inputs about the quality of the faculty how uh, the student life etc will be there then finally uh, you should look ask uh, some of the alumni alumni or those who have completed course uh, from particular college you should look you should ask for Uh, as some of the people uh, who completed the course maybe two years one year back or so they will uh, give you a broader picture of the institute uh, or of the college so because uh, yeah, ultimately uh, you are going to spend your next four years there and you need a basic element of uh, freedom like you are no longer you you will be joining college as a grown up guy or girl uh, so, I, so i would like to say i don't know whether uh, your teachers will like your uh, colleges are not an extension of your school colleges are uh, slightly more uh, free easy space where you can uh, explore yourself you can mingle you can you see you nobody will be uh, running after whether you have run, done this homework whether you have submitted this one whether they uh, maybe uh, so uh, whether you have attended class so, so such things Uh, you will have to be on your own and most of the for many people who are coming uh, from uh, see restricted environments so this is very somewhat uh, difficult to cope up i have seen it personally see people uh, tend to um, in, uh, get distracted uh, maybe after one year or so at college so because there are a lot of opportunities you 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 can cut one class and go to your uh, um, matini or some uh, lulu mall and uh, roma rao so that kind of uh, things will be always be there uh, but uh, you should uh, you should be aware your parents and your teachers should be aware that uh, the colleges uh, are not an extension of your school so there uh, maybe some colleges are run like that and they have a definitely a disadvantage at a disadvantage their the student life your quality of uh, student life will be much lesser of course the there is there is an, another aspect also like uh, some of the government colleges have uh, politics some um, uh, some other issues and all so you should not uh, actually if you enter go into a, a good government college uh, see all kind of uh, such advice environment will be there 
still uh, see you have a option of uh, improving yourself you are better in yourself uh, things like that so i will not elaborate on that because uh, it is something uh, it's a, it's kind of trade secret that uh, we keep okay? so you should enquire about it and you should why what are the antecedents of the college how how do they treat students how do uh, your alumni so the alumni will be the best source they will they'll be able to give you uh, the best uh, opinion about your whether it is a school whether it is a college see uh, one very small uh, test you can take you can just uh, whether you want to go back to your college you are uh, then if they say yes then you probably it should be okay because if the college is uh, very uh, strict or very um, I mean, school like probably people won't go back okay now let us uh, move on a little bit i don't know how, how much time i have taken so yeah almost 45 minutes so i i will wind up in uh, say 10 minutes or so uh okay one more uh, thing i wanted to mention is that if you if you uh, see the engineering is becoming uh, more or more or less an interdisciplinary subject say, because there is no uh, specific uh, branch or uh, specific area which is not affected by something else for example uh, the uh, things like data sciences artificial intelligence they have come uh, w- very recently so you you are you, even if you are a civil engineer even if you are electronics engineer so new there are there are options to explore uh, other avenues here so some of your teachers might be aware that uh, when you go for uh, especially science subjects you have an option to study uh, subsidiary subjects like uh, if you if you take mathematics as a main there will be some statistics subsidiary just like that recently our universities have started something called a minor program Uh, it means that if you if you are electro I mean if you are pursuing your uh, degree in civil engineering you can take up a minor uh, degree also minor means that you will have to, uh, to some uh, sit for some additional say, say five six papers you can take a computer science minor degree you can take a electronics minor degree so that option has come to our colleges now uh, it was it has happened j- very recently so even if you get into you see you you are uh, looking for computer science in some xyz college and uh, you uh, you did not get you go to do easy or you go to civil so you have the option of uh, acquiring an additional minor degree there so that will compensate for uh, your classes then so that you should be aware and finally uh, let me look at uh, the employment prospects that i think i have uh, briefly mentioned employment prospects of uh, various things but in kerala if you are planning to stick back to kerala uh, the see civil engineers mechanical engineers electrical engineers they have only one option switch to uh, it or computers so many people are switching like that when see those who are completing it I mean uh, electrical engineering or mechanical engineering they they switch to computer jobs see com- companies take them also because they need elect- the uh, this kind of uh, uh, specializations also in many companies so uh even if you pursue mechanical engineering you have the option of uh, joining an it company or it thing uh, but the uh, core jobs in mechanical or the electrical civil they may be missing in kerala but you know, if you go to uh, chennai or if you go to metro uh, outside kerala or uh, you have plenty of such opportunities maybe you should uh, uh, you should think of not be sticking back to kerala you should think in a global scale since every uh, everything is connected in is the, we are in a connected world and every uh, job uh, has its own prospects across the world uh, you should not think of uh, when you are choosing uh, your uh, career options uh, never think of sticking back to kerala because we have very very little options here and the only options we right now have is it industry if you are if you are in, uh, in computer science or electronics Uh, you have very good chance of sticking back to uh, sitting back in uh, kochin and working uh, even uh, even working from home uh, since uh, uh, the these companies uh, now offer work from home they say even even mncs of uh, ask you to sit at home and work so that option is there and maybe uh, and i think i will conclude my talk uh, by speaking about new generation uh, beta courses new generation courses that uh, uh, people are offering here and there as you will see load of uh, advertisements also 
new generation courses like data sciences artificial intelligence etc etc people people try to uh, uh, see attract people to that course uh, see some colleges so be very careful that's my advice we be very careful in uh, going for the new generation course uh, i'm not against any of them because i have worked with uh, data sciences myself because these things uh, have two uh, problems firstly uh, the te- these technologies are very new very very new and nascent uh, we don't know uh, what will happen after four years Uh, probably some of you might have remembered uh, the uh, an exam uh, some uh, might have heard of biotechnology say some 10 years or uh, 15 years back uh, people started a lot of biotechnology courses across kerala many colleges many places and what happened is that uh, there was some prospects of biotechnology revolution but it did not happen and uh, many people uh, were stuck in uh, biotechnology or uh, things related like that so that, there is a is a small possibility of that happening to these technologies it it can get stuck somewhere and it, there may not be uh, as far as the process so be very careful in choosing that uh, in fact ai data science everything uh, is a subset of computer science so i always ask people to go for computer science and do a specialization in such things so robotics or uh, cloud computing things like that Uh, at a later stage like when when you once once you have all the foundations built up you build up at hope uh, such uh, things or you acquire additional skills uh, from uh, uh, other sources like uh, like uh, your coursera or mooc courses etc and uh, second problem with the new generation courses is that you the faculty you see you should there should be somebody to teach it is very difficult to find a faculty and so i, I we are i am facing that problem because uh, if you if i want to get somebody to teach uh, a or uh, data science i won't get any because see there is a huge demand right now anybody who is who is having a basic knowledge of such things they will be paid much more and uh, absorbed by the industry so uh, these courses the, which are in nascent states be very careful so there will be lot of advertisements there will be lot of uh, people trying to attract to new things and obey saying that such and such office are there but ultimately uh, you should t- take precaution and uh, uh, take a judicious decision uh, maybe i think i will wind up i will give one more advice if somebody advertises hmm, front page advertisement in hindu in manorama or your newspaper uh, be skeptical be skeptical they the see good colleges don't need advertisement people automatically go there see whereas uh, those who advertise for one full page half page see now this is best thing so such things uh, try to sell whereas uh, the other ones uh, see you can you can say you look around your own vicinity in ernakulam how many colleges are uh, advertising how many uh, how many are not advertising so uh, if there is a natural demand people will go there so uh, that is something as uh, that that you can t- uh, take as an indicator of the quality or uh, uh, the prospects that you may get uh, uh, from such college uh, so maybe you would think of a long career plan long term career plan and don't be distracted uh, about many things that is happening around uh, i i completed uh, my btech some uh, in 89 1980 so it's a long back some 20, 30 32 years back and uh, at the now um, many as so i did i am an electronics engineer uh, by profession many of my classmates they diversified into many things like some of them uh, went on to become uh, and entrepreneurs some of them become uh, managers Uh, huge company we is in uh, companies like vodafone there are some of them become professors like me and so there is there is a wide variety of openings open for an engineer that is uh, the peculiarity of engineering you you need not stick to your uh, that certain branch you once you go out once you join somewhere you will have an uh, the option of expanding to many things because the kind of training that uh, you get here in engineering colleges 
uh, is a general purpose training you can branch out you will have necessary mathematics you will have necessary a uh, foundations you you may not have some specialization from college but you will have all foundations you can you can branch out to newer uh, and newer arenas newer vistas uh, see maybe uh, after 20 30 years later uh, so i will conclude uh, by one more example uh, as i told you i uh, i studied electronics uh, in marathonish's college called uh, and none of those papers or techniques we i am not currently teaching so everything has changed everything has changed every technology every maybe we did not have computers at that time so i generally teach using computers i work with computers and all so uh, because of that foundation that i had at that time i could very easily migrate to this migrate to something else so one of my uh, classmates is a, a very famous uh, fire engineer and the means he has studied electronics but he he designs uh, fire systems fire alarm systems for huge buildings maybe like burj khalifa or something huge systems buildings you need needs fire alarms fire things things like that he is doing but in our course we have never seen a fire thing fire alarm or we were never thinking of that but that kind of options you will have you can you can migrate you can uh, uh, expand yourself into newer vistas if you to engineer I think I will uh, conclude my talk. I I don't know whether I have been talking for some almost one hour. Uh, so, yeah. In fact, actually, uh, from an online class, you should not uh, speak like this. Uh, I'm sorry. I took a little more time. I, I can I can take some questions if you have. Uh, maybe uh, four or five. Anyone? No. I think online class is so boring. like people uh, get drowsy at the end of the course i mean class yeah if somebody is there you can you can raise your hand and speak the students no need of any hesitation you please uh, put forward your queries here yeah, we have an eminent person to answer you don't feel bad we are here or <laughs> i am here please i don't ask. think people have or uh, in the morning they you today's holiday for your school <laughs> no sir I, we or they already had uh, three sessions oh that's why right. uh, being <laughs> okay. online we cannot take more classes so okay, we are okay. working on saturday you, you have also. moved to saturdays also <laughs> so they are little <laughs> sluggish okay, that's fine fine because I, i and because we also have the same problem we are uh, also yeah. online and people and uh, get uh, so drowsy at the end of the day maybe four five hours we will have to take every day and uh, uh, long speeches like this me uh, will or we definitely be boring uh, boring and attraction i mean your attention span will be really limited anyway thank you uh-huh. so if there are no questions we can conclude uh, yeah uh, before getting into that uh, the formal uh, <laughs> uh, that word of uh, gratitude uh, i take this uh, opportunity to uh, thank dr sunil uh, spending uh, an hour uh, in spite of uh, your uh, tight uh, work of uh, as an academician and or in the principal uh, to uh, give a very insightful uh, thoughts and oration to our students on behalf of the entire campaign family i extend a heartfelt uh, thanks to you sir okay thank you <laughs> so okay I'm, over to this in sir. fact actually uh, i used to take offline classes i used to uh, come and interact with students uh, earlier Yeah, because uh, I have a passion to <laughs> interact and speak to people. <laughs> Doctor so, Sunil, I really met, appreciate uh, your special <laughs> skill to come down to the level of class twelve students. <laughs> okay, no, okay. okay say, that's what I have noted. That I there. have to uh, t- mention specially, sir. <laughs> yeah, if the schools reopen, I definitely I will try to uh, come over there once. Yeah, speak, with uh, pleasure. Uh-huh. Thank, you. Thank okay. you. Okay, continue. Okay. Thank you for an inspiring and informative section sir. Now I call upon Amuku TPR to propose the vote of thanks. A warm and cherished morning to all. It's my privilege to propose vote of thanks and acknowledge you the contribution of this webinar organized by Spark Campaign Career Guidance Cell. First of all my sincere thanks to almighty God for blessings and grace. 
I give a really heartfelt vote of thanks to our chief guest, Dr. Sunil Titi, Principal of College of Engineering, Trivandrum, who spent his busiest time with us. Today, we had the opportunity to hear your thoughts and guidance, and this is definitely going to help us in our future events. Thank you, sir. I am very grateful to our director, sir, Dr. K. V. Thomas, who has been always such an inspiration and in directing us through the right path. Thank you, sir. Next, I would like to express my gratitude to our dean and senior principal, Dr. Leela M. Thomas, who has been with us always and stand as a pillar of power. Thank you, ma'am. Now, I also thank our principal, Mrs. Annie Rita Joseph, whose loving engagement and motivation assures us to always believe in things and do the right thing. Thank you, miss. Now, let me thank academic coordinator, Mrs. Anima Titus, who always guides us and coordinates us. Thank you, miss. Now, my heartfelt thanks goes to all our teachers who always stand by us and inspire us. Thank you, teachers. I also want to thank our technical arrangement team and all the people who worked behind to execute this webinar so well. Last but not the least, let me thank the students of class 11A and 12A who are present here for their active participation. Thank you, friends. I hope you all found this webinar useful and got a good guidance and lot of information about challenges and jobs. Once again, I would like to say that we all are grateful to participate in this webinar and thank you so much for organizing this. Thank you and have a great day ahead. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much uh, for inviting me here. So, looking forward to meet you again. Thank you. Shall I leave? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you so thank much. You, thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Children, you are having afternoon session. Please attend, okay? Attendance is compulsory for the afternoon session.